Well, it's time now for Perspective. You have certainly seen video footage of the first moon landing, the moment when American astronaut Neil Armstrong made a, quote, small step for man and a giant leap for mankind. But if you think about it, have you ever seen photos of that major milestone? If you have, maybe they were grainy or blurry, basically underwhelming for such a landmark event. That thought is at least in part what was behind the work of my guest today, Andy Saunders, whose book Apollo Remastered includes hundreds of, well, remastered photos of some of the first trips to the moon. Andy Saunders, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So in my understanding, you don't have a background in space imagery. Uh, take us through kind of what led you to, to start doing this project and how the book came about. I've always had an obsession with the Apollo moon landing since childhood, really. Uh, I've always had an interest in photography. So a few years ago, I just found a way to kind of unite those two passions in sifting through 35,000 of the original photographs from the Apollo missions and digitally remastering and, and restoring them. You know, I've always been frustrated at the quality of what we see, uh, but it didn't make any sense because they use the best cameras, they use the best lenses, they use the best photo labs. We should have always seen them in a, in a better state. And the main reason is we've all, everything we've ever seen has been based on duplicate film. So the original film, so this is the film that was actually in the cameras on the moon, has remained hermetically sealed in this frozen vault in Houston uh, in Texas for almost 50 years. So we've always seen duplicates or low quality scans, but that film, that actual original film has finally made it out of this frozen vault and has been digitally scanned to an incredibly high resolution. So why? applying some time and some effort means we can see these events as never before. And why do you think, Andy, that it, it took so long for this to happen? Why over the past 50 years did those images, where they kind of hold up in that vault? I think it's just think how things have developed over time. I mean, 50 years is a, a long period of time. But if you think the first 25, we were still really in, a, in an analog world of film photography. So using duplicates to make a paper print is probably OK. And we didn't have the digital technology to warrant getting that very delicate, important film out of the freezer and risk damaging it, for example. Beyond that, then, for the next 15 years into the digital world, we just didn't, the scanning technology wasn't really good enough to lift all the detail out and warrant getting that original film out. It's very delicate, the film. It's very important. It's probably some of the most important film in existence. But with an, an increase, a step change in processing, in scanning technology, that kind of justified, right, let's get this out of the freezer. I mean, there's something about preservation as well, because that original film, sadly, will degrade over time. It's a chem The chemicals will eat away at it, essentially. So, so there's a little bit about preservation as well that's warranted getting that film out, of the, that original film out of the freezer. So, Andy, speaking of which, we're going to try and get, hopefully you can see them, we're going to try and get some before and after images on the screen. Uh, and once you see them, could you perhaps talk us through what we see and what the process was like uh, to remaster them? So here we see Neil yeah. Armstrong. This is an incredible photograph. They've just come back after the historic moonwalk in the lunar module, taking the helmets off and they're contemplating the enormity of what they've just achieved. But this is how we typically see this image. This is now the remastered image. And it's an incredible photograph and we can now see more detail. We can see the name across his chest. If you look very closely, his, his eyes are actually quite teary. Um, these were hard nosed test pilots, you know, was it emotion? Was he overwhelmed by what they just achieved? Or was it moon dust? Was it irritation? Was it tiredness? We don't know, but we can see that much more clearly. And this is a very historic moment. And what about uh, this, this image is, here? This is Apollo 13. So anyone that's seen the Tom Hanks movie, you may well watch it and think, well, what was it really like on board this lifeboat that got them home? Um, so this is Fred Hayes. This is from the 16 millimeter movie film. So as well as using the still images, I also take the movie film. This is now the remastered version separate this out into separate frames, stack them on top of each other, align them, consolidate them, and we effectively can pull out much more detail, detail we've never been able to see before. And I want the reader to feel like they can step on board these spacecraft of the 1960s, see what a 1960s moonship looks like, ride along with the space explorers on what were the greatest ever human expeditions. You know, look out the windows. they look. I've always wanted to look out the windows that they looked out of to see what they saw, how they saw it. So that's part of the, the motivation to do this. This is the front cover. This was a, a piece of film that was in a very bad state, very underexposed, but again, with some time and the digital processing and these original film, suddenly we have this wonderful portrait of Jim McDivitt doing his work in 1969, 
And that's also a very historic moment. That's the first ever docking of two crewed spacecraft. So as well it being a, a, a cinematic, atmospheric, he's looking, it looks like he's looking up in wonder at space. In fact, the reality is even better than that. Uh, Andy, the, it's, these images are, are really spectacular, and it, it brings to mind the, the idea that Neil Armstrong never walked on the moon is probably amongst the best-known conspiracy theories out there. Do you think that there's a link uh, between that and the lack of really detailed imagery and kind of pedagogy about what was happening and what it looked like up until now? Um, possibly. Um, I, I think the, the moon hoax thing is, is kind of quite old-fashioned now. I mean, we've, we've got probes. There's a, a probe from the Indian Space Agency that's up there now that this year took photographs of the Apollo 11 and Apollo 12 landing sites. You see the descent stage of the, the lunar module. You can see the astronauts' tracks. You know, uh, I've been through 35,000 pieces of original film to the absolute nth detail, every frame of 16 millimeter film. And I can categorically say they're not <laughs> faked. I mean, it would be harder to fake 35,000 pieces of film than it would to just go to the moon and take the photographs. <laughs> That, that is certainly <laughs> true, Andy. Um, I, the James Webb Telescope was inaugurated earlier this year, giving us now an unprecedented look at the early universe. Is this a game changer for you in terms of imagery of space? Is this really unprecedented? And what do you think that'll change in the future? Oh, it's absolutely incredible. We, we'll go almost seeing back to the, the dawn of, of time. There's been some images released recently comparing them to the, the Hubble images. And the Hubble images were absolutely incredible. So yeah, the, and we're only at the beginning of what James Webb will will uncover, uh, and to help us learn our place in in the universe. Do you have any uh, other personal projects, photography projects, about bringing restoring other images that have maybe been hid, hidden for so long? Yeah, there's all kinds of historic images that I, I would like to have a go at. I mean, next is Project Gemini, so this would be almost like a prequel, if you like, to Apollo. Um, these are the missions that paved the way to go to the moon. All right. And the photography on those is absolutely very different because it's more Earth-based, but it's they use a slightly different camera, and there's a, this incredible kind of retro feel to them that's referenced a lot in Hollywood movies, for example, and they're just absolutely stunning. So that would be next on my list. Andy Saunders, we'll be looking forward to it. Thank you very much for your time, for coming on Perspective France 24 today. Thanks for having me.